Hello and welcome back to Overbooked. I'm Amanda and today we're going to be reviewing the book Voices from Chernobyl, The Oral History of a Nuclear Disaster by Svetlana Alexafik. No idea if I pronounced that right. I have read this for the Reading Women Challenge prompt number two and the prompt was author from Eastern Europe. So our author is from Eastern Europe and I, I think like I've mentioned, is kind, I'm kind of fascinated with Chernobyl. I watched the HBO series and then read um, another Chernobyl book, which the name of the book is escaping me now, earlier this year. And I've had this actually on my list to read for a bit. Since I, I watched the series on HBO, I had a couple books that I put on my want to read list. And so I was glad that I had an opportunity to read this. So Voices from Chernobyl is literally like a collection of voices. So our author put together and wrote down each of the person's talking like point of view or perspective or whatever they had to say about Chernobyl down. And so you get a lot of different perspectives. Some people think that it's not that bad. Some people think it was horrible. Some people don't understand um, what the big fuss is about. There are people who um, are like, well, I'm still living here, um, I have nowhere else to go, or they're like, I'm known as Cher a Chernobylite now forever. Just so many different stories and so many different voices, which I just thought was really interesting and fascinating to read. There was a lot of stories in here that were like haunting and really like hard to get through just because of like, I can't imagine, you know, what it would have been like to have a brother or sister or a husband or a wife or somebody who got radiation poisoning and had to you had to watch and watch that person suffer essentially from it or just the unknown of what's going to happen to you or to somebody else around you is terrifying and um i just thought that some of these stories were just so like eerie and almost haunting in a sense and yeah, I, there's not really um, a ton to review because it's really just a collection of these voices. So she kind of just organizes them. I'm assuming she like kind of edited them down or did what she needed to do, but mainly it's just straight from the person's mouth of what they said. I think the one that hit me the most was, there's the la is the last one and it's this woman who, is just talking about how much she loves, or still loves, but loved her husband and how much she, like, she was like, I just, I hated being apart from him. Um, like, I just, I, it's hard to explain, but I just, I loved him with my whole being. And I just felt so incredibly bad for her because she had, she was one of those wives who had to sit and watch her husband go through radiation poisoning, suffer through it, and eventually die. And it was just so hard because the entire time she's like, I I don't know what I'm gonna do without him. And then she talks like in present tense where she's like, I will never be able to have anybody again because it's just that he was just the person for me and I can't imagine loving anybody else. And it was just so heartbreaking. And just, <laughs> I felt so horrible. Um, and I just, I don't know, it was just, it was interesting to read, um, eerie to read. I feel, and I feel like I have to like look back and maybe check in, but it almost just feels like these people are not, they're still not getting the information that they need. They don't know what is going on with them, what they should be concerned about. Um, and that's just almost terrifying. Like I, I'm, probably like 95% sure like the U.S. does shit like this without us even knowing but I can't imagine knowing that something had happened and like I knew it was gonna hurt me but I didn't know how I wasn't being told to me I guess kind of like the coronavirus I wouldn't in the beginning it was like I have no idea how I'm gonna be affected what what is gonna trigger this what is what is life and these people are living this like i feel like every day and it's just oof. eerie and haunting i feel like is the only words i can use to describe chernobyl 
I don't know. I just, I thought this was good. I didn't, I mean, I didn't think it was as interesting and fascinating as I thought it was going to be because some of the, some people's voices or, or stories are just not as interesting. Um, and I mean that in like the nicest way, but I still thought it was worth a read. So if you're interested in Chernobyl, you like nonfiction, I think this is definitely for you. I definitely don't think it's like for everyone. If you're not really that interested in Chernobyl, you're not interested in um, the event or, um, you know, the history that took place, which is not, I'm not saying that like, oh, you should be. Um, I just telling you if that's just something that doesn't interest you, that this probably isn't the book for you. Um, Cause otherwise I think you're gonna get bored real quick. But otherwise, if you're like me and you find it fascinating, I highly recommend checking it out. And if you've read this, please let me know what your thoughts were um, or if you're planning on checking it out. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like this video if you enjoyed and I will see you guys next time.